Unrecognized foreign currency firm commitment is very similar to something called purchase commitment under US GAAP. Now, what is a purchase commitment? So this, this way, maybe it will be easier for you to understand this concept. It's when you make a commitment. It could be signed, it could be oral, whatever it is, but you make some sort of a commitment and that commitment is firm. You cannot basically back out to acquire goods or services from a supplier or to sell goods or, for, or services for a fixed price. So basically you locked in your prices. And what happened when you lock in a price to buy or sell something in the future? Well, the price could change. And that price, when that price change, it could harm you. So let's assume you wanna buy something and you lock the price now at $100. You lock it, you have a firm commitment. Let's assume your textbook. By the time the semester start, the textbook are selling for 120. You did good, you locked your price at 80. But let's assume the textbook are selling at $80. Well, you didn't really do well, good because now you have to buy it at 100 and the current price is 80. So how does firm commitment, how does firm commitment uh, factor into this whole picture. How does it factor into this whole picture? Well, what's going to happen now? You're going to sell goods and services and you are going to have, um, you're going to have uh, a foreign currency future commitment. So you might sell goods and you may be receiving foreign currency or you might buy goods and you need to pay in foreign currency. But what, what's happening here? You did not really buy or sell. You just made a commitment. So it's unrecognized means, unrecognized means you, you don't, you don't, hedge the item. You don't have any asset or any liability on the books. So you don't have a receivable or an asset exposure or you don't have a liability or a payable exposure. You just have it. You made a commitment. So what you're doing here is you're hedging your commitment. You're, you're trying to protect the commitment that you make. How are you going to protect this? Okay. So we're going to be using a put option to, in this, in this recording. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, farhatlectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's gonna help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. No obligation, no credit card required. So the best way to illustrate this is to just go through an example. But before we go over the example, I just want to make sure we all understand how fair value hedging work. The gain or the loss of the hedging instrument is recognized in net income. The gain or the loss of the firm commitment also recognized in net income. So everything is recognized in net income. And the accounting treatment requires measuring the fair value of the firm commitment. So we have to know how much is the firm commitment and recognizing the change in the fair value in net income. That's fine. We already said this and reporting the firm commitment on the balance sheet as either an asset or a liability. Sometimes you might have it as an asset. Sometimes you might have it a liabilities. And how do you measure the, the fair value of the firm commitment? Well, you could use either the spot rate spot exchange rate, or you could use the forward rate. Now on the prior example, we used the forward rate. In this example, we're gonna be using, I believe the spot rate, if I remember how I set up this problem, okay? So let's assume Eximo purchased a put option to sell 1 million euros on March 1st year two at a strike price of $1.50. So this company, what they did, they, uh, they received an order and they accepted the order and they're gonna deliver on March 1st, they're gonna deliver the goods. But what's gonna happen, they receive the order December 1st, but they will not deliver till March 1st. So what's gonna happen is this, they made the commitment December 1st, that they're gonna have, they will be receiving the money, to, they would receive the 1 million euros, euros actually, it's not dollar, they would receive the 1 million euros March 1st. Okay, this is when they deliver and they would receive the euros immediately. What happened here is they, is they made a firm commitment and they exposed themselves to foreign currency. But this is unrecognized foreign currency commitment. Why it's unrecognized? Because they did not deliver. They don't have a receivable. So therefore, to protect their position, they bought it a put option to sell the euro at dollar fifty. Now the premium for such option, you have to pay a premium. If you want to buy a put option, there's a premium, is 0 0.009 per euro. We have one million euros times 0 0.009, we're going to have to come up with, we're going to have to come up with 
$9,000. Why do we have come up with $9,000? Well, to have a put option, it's going to cost you money. And that money is $9,000. Therefore, you have come up to $9,000. Okay, with this option, now just listen to this statement. Uh, um, listen to me carefully. With this option, the company is guaranteed a minimum cash flow of $1,491,000. Why? Because if the price of the euro is below 150, if the price of the euro drops below 150, they can they can sell the euros at 150. Now, if the price of the euro is 155, they're like, okay, we're gonna let the option expire, and they will buy the they will sell the euro at 155. So why one million dollar one mil one one million four hundred ninety one thousand? Because if they sell the euro, if they sell the euro for 150, they're gonna receive 1.5 million. They're gonna and it cost them $9,000. Therefore, 1.5 million minus $9,000 is 1,491,000. And this is the minimum they would receive, okay? So, so the company elect to measure the fair value through the reference of changes in the US dollar spot rate. So for this example, they're gonna be referencing the spot rate rather than the forward rate and you have to document this. You could use either the spot rate or the forward rate, but the company will have to determine which one they want to use, and that's part of their documentation for the transaction to be considered hedged accounting. And this is what we talked about at the beginning of this chapter. In this case, the fair value commitment must be discounted to its present value, and the fair value and changes in the fair value of the firm commitment and the foreign currency option are summarized as below. So let's take a look at the changes and make sure we understand what we are giving here. So on December 1st, when we made the sale, on December 1st, when we made the sale, the option premium we paid 0 0.009. And obviously that, that, that same day, if we paid that much, the value is that much. The foreign currency option is valued that much. And the spot rate, this is what we're using, is $1.50. This is what we'd be using to measure our firm commitment and to measure the hedging instrument. By the end of the year, the premium is 0 0.006, so the premium went down 0 0.003. And this has to do with the time, because as time passes, the always the option goes down in value. Therefore, the change in the fair value uh, of the of the of the option is negative three thousand. So the option itself lost three thousand. Now we made a firm commitment. We made, we said we're gonna be receiving one million of euros, and when we made that commitment, the rate was one point five one. Now guess what? The rate is one point five one. Oh, sorry, when we made the commitment, it's 1.50 when we made the commitment. Now it's 1.51. What happened to our commitment? If we receive the money today, we receive an additional $10,000. So our firm commitment, in other words, went up in value. How much did it went up? It went up 10,000 because now we would receive 1510 If today we are closing the position and receiving the money, then we have to discount it at the present value. Therefore, the fair value of the firm commitment is $9,883, okay? Then on March 1st, when we actually got the money, the premium actually went up. The option premium went up. Now your premium is worth more. Now we might say, why? Then time expire shouldn't, be, shouldn't go down. Yes, the 0 0.006 really went away, but what happened is the spot rate, the spot rate of the euro fell below uh, what you can sell the euro for. Now the spot rate is 1.48 and you can sell your euro at 1.5 because of this option. Well, guess what? The option premium is worth 0 0.02. It went up in value. The, so the, the option went up in value. It went from 0 0.006 to 0 0.002. That's going from 6,000 to 20,000. So that's a plus 14,000. So on the option, we made a profit of 14,000. And the reason I'm going all of this in detail, because I'm going to show you the journal entries in a moment. But the firm commitment, the firm commitment went down. Why did the firm commitment went down? Because if you did not have the option, you would only receive 1,480,000 if you did not have the option. Therefore, you would receive $20,000 less than dollar fifty when you and when you actually enter into the contract. So your commitment went down in value. And notice the option and the firm commitment work the opposite way. If one have a loss, the other one will have a gain. Okay? Now the best way to do this as I go through the journal entries, I show you the big picture here. Just you know copy this information down, okay, and create a T account to keep track of what's going on, especially with the balance sheet account. So let's start with the transaction step by step. First we bought the currency. We bought the option. So we paid nine thousand dollar. We created an asset. 
gold foreign currency option. Remember, at the end of the first year, the the euro went up to dollar fifty one. Therefore, our firm commitment went up by remember by ten thousand, but we discounted. It's nine thousand eight hundred and three. If I was writing this book, I would not use the present value because it just add more complication. But it's okay. So the, now we have an asset. We put an asset on the books, and we have a gain that goes into net income. Now remember, we had a gain on the firm commitment. The option lost three thousand because of the time value of money. Therefore, we debit a loss, and we credit the foreign currency option. We reduce this asset by 3,000. So simply put, here's let's summarize what we have from an income statement and balance sheet perspective at the end of the year. On the income statement, on the firm commitment, we made 9,803, we booked that much of a gain. On the option itself, we booked a $3,000 loss. So overall, copy this number down, for year one, we have a profit of $6,083. Now our balance sheet, our cash went down by 9,000. Our fair foreign currency option is six. Why is it six? We started with nine, then we reduced it by three. That's why it's 6,000. That's the options value. The firm commitment is $9,803, $9, and net income goes into retained earning to balance the other, the other side of the balance sheet. Now, here comes the, here comes, uh, we did December 31st, here comes March 1st. Now here comes March 1st, well, guess what? Um, remember our commitment, we have a loss on our commitment and we have a gain on the option. Let's go ahead and book those. So on the commitment, we debit a loss on the firm commitment and we credit the asset, we credit the asset firm commitment. So again, keep track of the firm commitment. Now here's what happened. Firm commitment, you had $9,803 debit. Now you credited, you credited 29,000. Now you're gonna have a credit and an asset account. That's okay, just keep track of it because we're gonna be closing the transaction soon. Okay, then you have to book, uh, you book the gain, you book the loss on the firm commitment. Now you have to book the gain on the option itself. The option have a gain of 14,000. Well, you debit foreign currency option, your option went up, and you credit foreign gain on foreign currency option, which is a gain. Notice this is the loss and this is the gain. Okay, you, you, uh, and you, you, you book the gain on the option itself. Now, again, if you also want to keep track of your foreign currency option, that's not a bad idea. Okay, the foreign currency option, remember, it started at 9, went down by 3, now went up by 14. Started by 9, started for 9, went down by 3 at the end of year 1, and now it increased by 14. Why? Because the value of it went up. Okay, so now you're looking at $20,000 in foreign currency option. Um... Okay, then you receive the money. When you receive the money, the exchange rate is 1.48. You debit foreign currency, 1,480,000. You receive the million, you book your sale. This is March 1st when you actually uh, when you actually make the sale. Then you're going to take your foreign currency and transfer them into 1.5 million in cash. Why? Because you have a put option that's going to give you the option of selling them at 1.5 and the rate is 1.48. You're going to use your option. Okay, then you would remove this foreign currency because you're going to give up your foreign currency. And now you remove the foreign currency option of 20,000. You have to remove the foreign currency option of 20,000. And let's take a look overall what happened throughout year two, just to kind of see what happened in year one and year two. Then again, before we just the last transaction, you, you remember we had a firm commitment, a credit balance of 20,000. If you kept track of your firm commitment, you had a, you had a credit balance of 20,000, you debited, and you transfer it to net income. Therefore, your net income will go up by that much. So let's see what happened over a period of two years. For year two, let's talk about year two. Year two, you have sales of 1,480. You had a loss on the firm commitment for year two, $29,803. Gain on the firm currency option, 14,000. And adjustment to income, when you close your firm commitment, you have a gain of 20,000. So impact on net income in year two, is 1,484,197. Remember the income, the impact of income in year one, let's go back and get that number. It's right here, $6,803, $6,803. If I take my year two income plus $6,803, if I add that to them, I'm gonna come up with 1,491,000. And do you remember this number? I said the minimum we'll get is 1,491,000. Why? Because because the euro fell below uh, $1.50, 
what we do is we exercise the option and sell the euros at dollar fifty. And as a result, when we book all the gain and the losses, we're going to be receiving one million four hundred and ninety-two thousand, which is what we said we're going to do at the beginning, which is one million five hundred thousand. Then we paid nine thousand, and that by paying that nine thousand, we got we guaranteed ourselves this one million four hundred and ninety-one. Thousand. Now, what if the rate was higher than the strike price? Again, if the euro is was dollar fifty three, dollar fifty five, dollar sixty, anything above dollar fifty, we would have not used the option. We would have just sold the euros at this rate and received more than one million four hundred and ninety one thousand. That's why we said that's the minimum cash you would receive. It means you could receive more, but the minimum is you are guaranteed one million four hundred ninety one by buying this put option if you have any questions about this topic please email me if you're studying for your cpa or acca exam make sure you study hard if you happen to visit my website or my youtube please consider donating to support the channel good luck and see you on the other side of success